It's the Monday Morning Show! Wait, we're back to this? Yes, we're back to this! Temporarily interrupting DC Home, and today is December 5th, 2018. I'm Ken LaSalle from KenLaSalle.com, and it's time for something a little different, as today you and I are going to go inside DC Home. I just wrapped up the first five-episode cycle, which was my original intent. I wanted to take the idea of DC Home out for a spin, to see how it felt, kind of like a, a test drive. And I have to say, I rather liked it. More episodes of DC Home are percolating in my prefrontal cortex, or whatever part of my brain ideas come from. Uh, Let's see, uh, plans, complex cognitive behavior, personality expression, decision-making, moderate social behavior. Sure, why not? So, while five more episodes are percolating up there, I thought I'd give you my feeling on where this is going and how the road to that destination, whatever it is, feels thus far. And yes, more episodes of Original Recipe Monday Morning Show are on their way, which will then be followed by more DC Home. Will DC Home splinter into its own podcast? That remains to be seen, but I will most certainly keep you posted. So then, what is DC Home? What was my intention in starting this... whatever this is, and what is this? The bottom line was, um, well, I'll need to take you back a few years to tell you the whole story and... Shameless plug. You'll probably hear me talking about some of this when I appear on the Writer's Block on LA Talk Radio next week. You can find the Writer's Block online, and if you like it, be sure to go check out their GoFundMe page and drop a few bucks if you're so inclined. So, anyway, a few years back, I used to write plays, and before that, I was an actor. I had tried my hand at writing novels, but my work in the theater was where all of my best writing appeared. It took years for me to find a way to make my novels as good as my plays, to inject the same sense of fun into them. And until that happened... I focused a lot of my time on writing nonfiction. You may be familiar with Dynamic Pluralism, my book on ethics, or Illumination, my book on finding enlightenment. Until my novels got dialed in, nonfiction was my focus. Then, a few years ago, everything came together. I wrote a book called Heaven Enough, which I feel was a huge step for me as a writer. Since then, my main focus has been on fiction. That sounds pretty open and shut, but there was more to it than that. I worked on two nonfiction titles this summer and realized that for right now, at least, I don't have the enthusiasm for nonfiction that I once had. So I scrapped both of those titles before turning my attention back to this podcast. Because this podcast is mostly nonfiction as well. And I'm a little tired of talking about, to, with, for, or five myself. Which is when DC Home started making itself known. I should probably explain that my kind of writing, the way I do it, is a lot less intentional than you might think. I see myself as having two minds, one that handles the day-to-day and the other, buried somewhere deep inside of my cranium, that focuses on the big ideas. This is where my ideas come from, and I do what I can to make those ideas come to life. One idea I had was that I wanted to write something in a persistent universe, a universe that changed and grew dynamically in ways that even I could not foresee. But how to do that? I couldn't do it in a book, and I couldn't do it in a play, so I had to find a new way. And it helps to have a guide to help you out. 
not a person, mind you, but some changing dynamic that would pull me through this universe. Being a person who is very interested in politics, I've always wanted to focus on that more in this show. The problem is that when I talk politics, I get preachy. I know this. Instead, I decided to use politics as my guide in DC Home, using the news of the day to guide where the story goes, so that not even I know where it's headed. I used Garrison Keillor's News from Lake Wobegon as a model. I would write a new story each week, never write ahead, never outline, and never assume I know the whole story. I have a great deal of respect for Mr. Keeler, and I never wanted to copy, which is why I began DC Home as an obvious homage and why DC Home is slowly changing and growing into its own thing. And I have to tell you, this is really exciting. It's, it's like being in the audience while also being the author. At the end of each week, I think, where the hell is this going? And then I find out the next week. I knew I wanted the first protagonist to be emblematic of what I was hoping to achieve, that being a series of tales about people who live in a political world. This is why we begin in Washington, D.C., a political town. I'll tell you now that I have no intention on rooting the story in D.C. permanently. And I also have no intention on leaving the world of politics behind forever. My first protagonist, Sherry Finn, is a woman who is having a pretty good time in life. Until the night of October 1st, 2017, when her sister and brother-in-law were killed in a mass shooting in Las Vegas. After five episodes, I am still dealing with the fallout from that event in my little fictional universe, just as I am sure so many others are still coping in a real way in our real world. I firmly believe we need common sense gun laws, and my placing this pivotal moment in the story in Las Vegas at that time was my way of honoring the many who suffer every day from our neglect. Sherry doesn't so much inherit her brother-in-law's bar any more than she adopts her nephew. These things are just dropped into her lap. She has to run the bar, called Freedom Fried, or she'll lose her only income, and she has to raise her nephew, Sean, because there's no one else to do that. Sean may be autistic, he may also just be an asshole. I don't think these two things need to be mutually exclusive. Not every person who is different from us is scary, no more than they are sweet and lovable. They're just people. And that's my goal with Sean, to make him as real of a person as I can. This started with his incessant masturbating because, after all, he's a teenaged boy and we know how they can be. But I'm sure he'll turn off his phone and zip up his pants in good time. At least I hope so. My final character, the third introduced in five episodes, is Old Herbert. And I'm just going to come out and say this. Old Herbert is nuts. He's crazy. He's cuckoo bananas. As a diagnosed schizophrenic, I think... I have just as much right to tell stories about Looney Tunes as anyone. Old Herbert might be schizo, but for now, I'm avoiding labels. Except when used for comic effect. You'll find that's pretty consistent across the board. I don't label Old Herbert's mental deficiencies any more than I label Sean, short of stating that he may be on some scale of some kind. I don't address race. I don't talk about body shape all that much. My focus is on what these characters are going through, what they're feeling. And yes, my hope is that if you like DC Home, maybe you'll give one of my books a try. I hear the audiobooks are a lot like listening to this podcast, but with slightly better production values. So maybe head on down to Audible, where they'll give you a free book for joining 
and I could recommend a few free books. I'd be much obliged. And so, that's it for this first look inside DC Home. I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions or suggestions about DC Home or any of my work, you can contact me through my website at kenlasall.com or find me on YouTube, Twitter, or Facebook. I look forward to hearing from you. And until next time, be good to yourself, be kind to others, and let's make this world a better place.